Health IQ Podcast. Say hello to your little friends. Anxiety. Welcome back. We have a special episode for you today. Joining me at the table are our contractors, Rochelle Moon and Joyce Runyon. And our crew today is Bobby with the help <laughs> of Joyce. <laughs> Bobby Huckabee. And I am Brenda Bishop. Earlier this year, we conducted a um, an event, I guess, a form of research called a studio, which I had never heard of, with the help of UNM Health Sciences Clinical and Translation Center. Um, our member, Cynthia Kil- Kilro, and her co-worker, Randy Benelli, served as the facilitators for this, so they came from Albuquerque over here to do that. Right. And the sort of over the past year, we've been looking at mental health as a whole and talking to people, doing some mini focus groups, um, doing some surveys to try to narrow down um, a focus because the mental health area is huge. Mm -hmm. It's a real hot topic. And so um, to narrow down a focus so that we could choose something to work on that would make an impact in our community. So by the, towards the end of our contract year, we um, determined that anxiety was that issue that is facing uh, many people in our community. And even after we determined that, I was talking to a mental health provider who said there's a lot of research that's showing that anxiety is the contributing factor to many other mental health issues. So our first step in the next process was to um, visit with mental health providers about their views on anxiety. And we did that in this form of a studio, which I had not heard of, but it's a type of a focus group. And um, it just has a little bit less data analysis from what we've been told. And so after we have this discussion, with all the mental health providers, then we try to compile all that information into an infograph. Mm -hmm. And so Joyce took that lead with the development of infograph. And so I'd like you to just sort of go over the infograph and I'm sure we will add that. Well, it's already on our website, Mm -hmm. but we will also um, have that as probably a picture during some of this podcast. So as Brenda said, uh, we met with what we referred to as our community experts, and some of them were in mental health, some of them were with um, child development, uh, youth protection programs. Um, We had some uh, religious representation as well. And our committee came up with questions that we wanted to ask them, like Brenda said, about anxiety specifically, because anxiety is a contributing factor to many health mental health issues, and regular health. If you're anxious, it's going to affect your heart rate, your blood pressure, um, sleep, just a lot of things. So anxiety um, is one of those things that goes both physically and um, mentally as well. So it was something that was kind of identified. And so we got them together and we asked them these questions because um, we wanted to do a focus group, but a focus group was much Uh, more stringent in the questions you could ask and how they were looked at. And so we're very happy that Cynthia was able to um, work with us on this and has done some some of her own studios. So we were really happy about that. So we did ask them. um, We had eight people that we were there that participated with the studio. And uh, our questions were based around... uh, four different points, I guess. So uh, the first one was, why do we have anxiety? And there was a lot of, you know, we care about things. Uh, Students have anxiety sometimes with tests because, you know, you want to do well. Uh, And like I said, it can cause physical manifestations. So you can actually feel that physically in your body as well. And then we said that there was also some societal pressures. Mm -hmm. So there are certain expectations for men as to how they should handle and deal with stresses that may cause anxiety, as opposed to how women should be able to do that. Another thing we thought uh, was mentioned was a lack of coping skills. You know, uh, we had our pandemic and everybody was shut down and sequestered and we just, that was hard on everyone. And it just, I think, highlighted again the need 
for mental health care and how we take care of ourselves and how important that is. And then another thing that we recognized was that there was just an increased access to information. We all have our cell phones. I don't have mine up here, but we usually carry those with us. And that's 24 seven. Uh, we get notifications uh, throughout the night. This affects our children and their sleeping patterns and how well they do. And so that that little tether we have to the world, um, although it can be a good thing, it can also be damaging to your health. So those were things that we um, recognized. This is why we have anxiety. And I think the key point was that um, everyone experiences anxiety. And on some levels, that's just really very normal. That's part of life. It kind of helps direct you. It can keep you out of some dangerous situations. If you get anxious and you say, maybe I shouldn't be here. Well, maybe you shouldn't be there. But And I think the thing that surprised us was that they said many of our young people don't realize that that's normal to have a little exactly. bit of anxiety. Yeah. That it is normal. Uh -huh. And that you really only should be worried about anxiety is when it interferes interferes with what you would do on a regular basis. So if suddenly you can't leave your home or uh, you find it difficult to do something that you were able to do prior, then that's more of an issue. And it's not something that um, you probably need to address that because it's going to be causing you other issues. Because anxiety well. on its own is not a disorder. Yes. It's just part of yeah. being alive. Right. <laughs> it's like breathing. So another thing that we looked at was the perceptions on getting help. And um, I think everybody says, oh, yeah, sure, I'd go talk to somebody about, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that's not so easy in a small community because everybody knows everything about everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it can feel uh, difficult to have any type of uh, patient privacy when you live in a small community. And um, another thing that sometimes happens with with treatment for stuff like that is that it's sometimes it's court ordered. And so there's a stigma with that as well. Oh, you're going to get this taken care of. You have that issue. And so you must have gotten in trouble with the law and you have to go and do that. And, uh, and then we also just, we ourselves say, you know, I'm okay. I can handle this. This is all fine. And we put our own roadblocks up in the way that I don't need this help. I don't want that assistance. And then um, another thing that's really huge is our health care. Mental health hasn't been something that's really been um, treated as well as it should be recognized for, uh, for people that are, that are needing that type of care. And it's kind of considered a, an extra benefit and maybe not just like if we wanted to go see our physician or we can walk in, do a copay, and it's just mm -hmm. all very natural. Sometimes that doesn't happen with mental health care options. And... We're, we are in the rural community, so we don't have a lot of services here. We have very basic services, and um, so that makes it hard if you need something more than that's what's basic. Uh, of course, we talked a little bit about um, the societal pressures. So for men, especially, perceptions on getting help is, is really very difficult because you're not weak, you're weak, you're not strong enough, you can't you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And so those were some perceptions that we discussed as a as a community about these are some reasons maybe why people are not getting help. And then we talked about, well, how can we fix that? What are some things that help? And uh, it was how to help yourself, how to help other people, and maybe if you need to seek professional help. And then there was also, since um, talking about a holistic approach, that we want to include the physical, the mental, and the spiritual components of a person. So um, we like to segment our care, especially in healthcare. You see a specialist for this and a specialist for that, and hopefully you see a primary care provider who can help you deal with all these other specialists you're seeing. But we, we don't want to ignore the spiritual component of people as well because anxiety is something that um, it weighs heavy on your mind, and so you want to make sure you are addressing that too. So some things you can do is, of course, good nutrition and exercise. How you fuel your body is a big deal. If you're eating fresh foods, um, whole grains, your fruits, your veggies, stay away from as much processed things as you can. Make sure you're getting your exercise. And it doesn't have to be, you know, running five miles. You just need to get up and go, maybe go for a walk in the morning, you know, do some things like that. And again, 
normalize that it's okay if I feel anxious. Mm -hmm. It's not okay if I feel anxious and I can't do things I used to. So anxiety as a part of your day is not bad, but if it limits your day, then that is bad. So we can help others by um, helping them develop problem solving skills. That's really big for our kids. Mm -hmm. I know as parents, sometimes we wanna step in and fix it uh -huh. and make it better. And uh, that's not, it may work and it may be a quick resolution, but they need to develop those communication skills. And how do I, how do I navigate this? How can I switch this around? How do I approach this? And so I think that's really big for our kids to be able to do. Um, if it becomes overwhelming for them, you don't want to leave them in that. So you do want to then maybe say, give them some suggestions. Have you thought maybe about we could handle it this way or maybe this way and still give them some options that they can kind of work through and make it their own process about, I solved this. And then that helps you say, next time I can solve this again. And I think that's something our kids are 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 lacking. Um, we also want to be supportive and encouraging. And again, like I said, when they solve those issues, we can reflect on it and say, this happened and we figured it out. And so this is a good thing for you. And if you do need to uh, go for professional help, they have therapies that can help you as well. And so that's always a, a good option for anybody to look at to go see a mental health care provider. So the very last portion of our uh, infograph is about community needs. And uh, again, we're a small community, we're a small county, where we've got limited funds for taking care of all the things that need to be, do, need to be done. But one of the things that we looked at was um, providing jump ropes for people to be active indoors if they felt uncomfortable being outside or going places, because um, we don't have really good sidewalks. <laughs> and so it might be nice just to jump a rope in your backyard. And we actually did that at the fair. Mm -hmm. And I think that was well received and we're getting ready to, we'll be having another event and we're gonna be having jump ropes available there too. And a demonstration. And a demonstration. Cause who knows how to jump a rope? Yeah, a lot of kids <laughs> have not learned that That's skill. what we learned is the yeah. kids don't know how to use jump ropes. They said, what do you do with this string? Um, another thing we looked at was just encouraging community pride so that people that live here um, would be more, I don't know if upbeat's really the way, but just more appreciative of the things we do have because we are a small community. And sometimes you just look at the, the drawbacks and uh, you need to be looking at some of the benefits as well. So we, we are a small community. We definitely do have our issues, but we're, I think we're a community that cares and wants everybody to be doing better. So those are some things I'll show you the infograph. That was a, a really interesting thing to work on because I'd never done that before. And uh, I'm really thankful to Cynthia's help and input on that too. I think it, it turned out nice. It has a lot of good information and it's um, pleasant to see. <laughs> So be sure to follow our social media because we built an action plan around these things that were brought up. And um, so over the next year, probably two years, mm -hmm. we'll be working on um, several things on uh, that were brought out in there. So follow our social media, see what we're up to. And as Joyce said, we've already had a couple of jump rope giveaways, a fun physical activity event, mm -hmm. and um, a, our webpage. So we've already got some of those things that are listed as um, there, and we'll be um, working on some more. So as I said, we have going to have a web page. We have a web page all on anxiety. Mm -hmm. And Rochelle has been working really hard to try to find the information, good information to put up on that web page. And also um, some things that we shared during the fair, um, our county fair way back in August. Um, we um, did quite a few things around anxiety there. So um, you want to tell us Which, some of the things you Joyce come up with? touched on this a little bit already about different little strategies that are actually in your um, uh, forgot you about this. Graph. Your <laughs> infograph. Yeah, yes. I've lost the word. Um, so you shared a few strategies you kind of mentioned, but um, 
I just recently heard a story about a mom whose daughter, every time she took a test at school, she thought, oh, I failed the test, I failed the test. So she'd mm. text her mom, I'm sure I failed this test. And the mom would text right back. And then the mom realized she needed to stop doing that because her daughter needed to learn how to self-soothe oh. in a situation that was a little uncomfortable for her. Mm -hmm. um, so I think self learning self-soothing is an important part of how we cope with anxiety. That's normal. Um, so there's things you can do to soothe your mind, and that might be like take a pause or think about yourself as maybe a child. Consider, like, think of yourself as a little kid and think of you scared in the dark. What would you say to that little kid, part of you, to soothe that child? You know, you'd say, oh, it's going to be okay, honey, you know. Um, so think of yourself that way when you're in an anxious situation. So that eases your mind, which also e then eases your body. And then you talked a little more about easing your body, like go for a walk or mm -hmm. drink some water or, you know, um, I don't know if anyone's seen the new movie, Inside Out 2 with anxiety <laughs> is one of the main characters. Mm -hmm. It's a great movie because in the movie, Riley, the main character shows us how she grounds herself by sitting down taking some deep breaths, mm -hmm. feeling of her surroundings, like touching, you know, a fabric and thinking about that fabric. And it then it eased her mind by easing her body. So those are just mm -hmm. a couple of ways in the movie. Um, to uh, help yourself when you're in an anxious situation, which we all get in. Look at yeah. us. We're here public yeah. speaking, being recorded. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of scary and anxious, you know. Um, one of the it number is. one fears <laughs> is public speaking. Yeah. Um, but there's so many strategies you can do when you're in a normal situation or in a or in a different situation, you could say, mm -hmm. you know, that's not always comfortable. I don't know about anybody else, but, you know, toward during the pandemic, when we were all having to wear masks and all those things, I was anxious to go in the store sometimes, you know, yeah. because I was like, am I going to get sick? You know, so I think even just things that used to be normal, we've all faced some anxiety lately Yeah, um, that we've had to learn how to cope and deal with. And Because I still had to go to the store and get food. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's just a couple of tips. So when you were talking about fear, it reminded me of a podcast I had heard, oh, years ago. Um, and a lady says that you name your fear. Mm -hmm. You call, you know. Name it Alice or Bob or <laughs> yeah. whatever. You name mm -hmm. this fear and you tell it, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, Leave me alone. Yeah. I've heard that, but it was um, separating your thoughts, your brain, from just accepting all those things. And you name it and you say, look, I'm not going to listen to you because you're telling me lies, <laughs> uh -huh. just like you would a person. Yeah. So um, that's funny that it was yeah. fear, but they were just saying, just have that so that when... You have those negative thoughts in your head. You can right. just say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going there. And you don't just continue to ruminate on mm -hmm. that yeah. Yeah. and let it take over. So, And that self-soothing, I mean, when we bring our babies home, there's a lot of that that you're learning to do with them. And, you know, you let them cry for a little while and, you, you, you know, they have their blanket, they have their little stuffed animal, they have these things just to kind of calm themselves down. And so... Um, I just thought that that was a nice picture to say, you know, you can do this even when you're older. Just mm -hmm. find those things that um, bring you some comfort. Mm -hmm. So um, another thing I thought you could just briefly touch on, because I know you did a, a great program with some youth called Youth Connections. Sure. And there are several things that they need to learn to build these coping skills, mm -hmm. um, several um, that seem to have disappeared during the last few years. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe you could at least remind parents that are watching what kind of skills our, our kids need or what kind of okay, things. Okay, I'll try to dredge Remember? back up my memories of doing the group with the are kids. Are those the ICANN statements? The, yeah. So we had some statements for that. We had, during this group, we did a... It's like a little ritual that you do and some things you say. Well, I, I remember one thing that you talked about was the importance that kids needed to have a person in their life that they could felt comfortable, uh, an adult to. person mm -hmm. that they felt comfortable talking to. Yes. Um, it's really important for kids if they have one caring adult, just one, it can change the complete tra trajectory of what who they are, what where they end up, where they're going. Um, and I remembered the sayings. It's I am, I can, I have, I will, I believe. 
that's the statements. And if they can ha ha memorize that, they whenever they're in an anxious situation or a situation where they need mm -hmm. to be standing up for themselves or mm -hmm. someone else, or they're in just a tough moment, they can s have things in their mind of what their beliefs are, their own belief system, you know, so they can say, I am strong. I have the ability to do this. You know, I, I will get this done. Mm -hmm. um, if they have that, those tools and it, it helps them be able to have some resiliency and be able to build the skills that they need so that they're not relying all the time. You're talking about babies, but not always relying on your parents because, you know, they're got to grow up and become an adult and live their life and have yeah. kids of their own. So yes. if they can learn those skills and have that one caring adult. So if for parents and adults out there, you can be that one caring adult um, to for, your kids and to your kids' friends and yeah. to other young people that you meet. And those aren't yeah. things that they normally hear. They don't always hear that you can do this. You are capable. You have the abilities mm -hmm. to do this. And so it's just really an important thing for them to hear that from somebody else who's got a little bit of clout, maybe a little bit longer down the road, mm -hmm. that, hey, you, you got this. You can get there. Yeah. So... So another thing I thought we could just toss out there, um, we had a display at the fair that um, caught a lot of attention. So it gave us the opportunity to explain um, the wall. And so, Joyce, maybe you could tell us a little bit so, about that. Um, this is something we use when we go and speak about suicide prevention. And I always like to end with this because uh, it's called the wall of resistance and it um, you know, we look at a wall and we see all the blocks in there and each of us have this wall and um, uh, sobriety really should be like a foundational brick because if you are not sober, there's probably a reason that you're using substances, whatever those are. So, so sobriety is really important. And then, you know, maybe it's the support of your family. Maybe it's uh, you have a good job or you're in good health and you have all these bricks that fill up your wall. And as we go through time, and we become a little bit older, maybe our best friend moves away, or we lose our spouse, or we get bad health information. Um, we lose our job, we don't have health insurance, all these little things kind of chip away at those blocks. And suddenly, you can have a whole block, you can have a whole series of blocks gone. And um, suicide is something that's not just one situation that causes that to happen. Usually it's one situation that's just a little too much with all the other things that are going on in your life. And so I always want to encourage people to recognize what are the blocks in your wall. Um, if it's your faith, if it's reading your Bible, if it's music, if it's exercise, if it's eating well, um, whatever those things are, your friends, your, your family, that you're maintaining those bricks. And should you have a brick that becomes misplaced, say your best friend moves away, you, you need to kind of bolster that area and put something else in there. And so it's important to know what's in your wall because it'll help keep you safe, um, safer mentally. It'll give you more resilience so that you can deal with all of these unexpected things that always seem to happen to us. Um, and I will, I'll also mention something that, uh, I, there's one person I follow on Insta, Instagram and they were talking about the RAS, and it's a reticulating something in the very back of your brain. And they talked about, they called it lucky girl syndrome, but I was thinking I needed to do a post that was just a lucky day syndrome. And this um, RAS, what it does is it filters all of the information you receive. So we receive millions of bits of information. Every day. <laughs> Every moment, Every you moment. know, all this stuff going on. And our RAS filters that so that we can focus on those things. So sometimes if you say, oh, I see red cars everywhere, mm -hmm. you really do see red cars yeah. everywhere because your RAS has said, oh, we're going to look for red cars. And so when you start your day, it's good to tell yourself, I'm going to have a good day today. Today's going to go well. My plan is going to, it's going to follow through. Everything's going to fall in line. And it's going to be smoothly. And then your RAS filters those things that, hey, I had a good day. This went well, and then this came up next. Instead of saying, oh, I'm so tired. And then, well, I'm so tired. <laughs> or, oh, I'm just so angry at so-and-so. 
ah, we want to work on anger. And so if you take that moment before you get up and get going and just say, you know, I'm, I'm going to focus on having a good day today. That helps your RAS find those things for you. Those little glimmers that we've talked about in another one and it helps kind of direct you down on a good day path. And you can have a, a lucky day syndrome yourself. So that reminds me when people tell me, have a good day as I leave, I always say, I plan to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I remember that from a customer service training I used to do about choosing your attitude every day. That's good. And I plan to have a good day every day. Doesn't always happen, but most of the time it does. <laughs> so um, I'm really excited about where we're going to go this year with this plan and all these great things we're going to do about anxiety. And we're still adding stuff. The plan just keeps getting longer as we talk to more people. So, um, but I, I, I'm just super excited about that. So be sure to follow us and see what else we have on. we're going to have several more podcasts with things that we're doing. And if, um, you live in Quake County and you would like to have a program, but, um, on the suicide prevention mm -hmm. that, um, Joyce and Rochelle do, um, please let us know. We also have one on reducing stress and a really fun one on laughter. Mm -hmm. So our food for thought today is um, worrying doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength from Corey Ten Boom. So if you don't know Corey's story, you should look her up because yeah, she's if amazing. anybody has can, I mean, should not have a positive attitude, it would be her. Yeah. And um, she has many great books out about things so um anyway so worrying doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow it empties today of its strength and i know so many people who worry about the smallest things mm -hmm. and i've really in my life tried to say and i still worry not that i don't worry because i'm around <laughs> worriers but you know trying to not focus on the little bitty things and mm -hmm. only on the big stuff and and make a plan at that point how I'm going to deal with whatever that stress is. Okay, how do I move forward from this so it doesn't take all my strength away? Well, and I would go even farther just to say not just your strength. I think it takes your joy. It steals a lot from you. And so, um, and like Brenda said, you know, there, there's enough today to get through mm -hmm. without pushing that off till tomorrow. So... It's really important. Your mental health is just so huge and impacts so many different areas of your life that um, worry and anxiety, if there's something you can do about that, and we're going to provide you with some tips and resources that um, you need to be you need to be doing that. You need to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And as uh, Michelle was talking, uh, that just reminded me, we already have some of those on our YouTube page under our Take a Moment series mm -hmm. for self-care. Yeah, we do. Go ahead, Rochelle. Well, some breathing ones and all that. Um, well, I was thinking about worry. I think in a lot of ways, it's about control or trying to control mm -hmm. yeah. um, things. And, you know, the truth is none of us have. It's out of your control. We really have no, we have little <laughs> control over things yeah. that might, may happen. Yeah. Um, we have a little bit of autonomy with that, but not much. Mm -hmm. And so I, it is true that worry will just it'll waste your life away. And yeah. so why give the power to worry? So get that worry under control. You know, mm -hmm. I've heard lots of things like write it on a note card and put it in the freezer. Put it on ice. <laughs> we'll think about that another day. Um, uh, you know, there's only so much we yes. can control. So that's true. So thank you for joining us for this episode. Um, I hope you found it interesting and informative. If you are from Quake County and would like to join us in this important work, please email us at healthiqpodcast at gmail.com. And we'll see you for our next episode.
Special thanks to our guest contributors for this episode. Rochelle Moon, Partnership Addressing Substance Struggles Coordinator. Joyce Runyon, Quay County Health Council Assistant Coordinator. Our host for this episode was Brenda Bishop, Quay County Health Council Coordinator. Cool thanks to Gordon Runyon, our locations manager for keeping us chill. <laughs> Health IQ Podcast Crew. Our director was Robert F. Hockaday. Our producers are Robert F. Hockaday and Joyce Runyon. Our camera operator, Robert F. Hockaday. Our second camera assistant, Joyce Runyon. This episode was edited by Joyce Runyon and Robert F. Hockaday. Music was provided by David Morris. Funding for Health IQ provided by a New Mexico Better Together grant. Brought to you by the Quay County Health Council. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Quay County Health. If you have any content ideas, reach out to us by email, H-E-A-L-T-H-I-Q-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. More info about this topic and more available on our Health IQ blog, Q-C-H-E-A-L-T-H-C-O-U-N-C-I-L dot org. This podcast was created solely for educational and entertainment purposes. It is not intended as a substitute for advice from a healthcare or mental health professional. Special, special, special.